Becky Lynch is making rounds again, doing interviews in the New York Post, saying uh, her mission statement of what she's trying to do with the NXT Championship. So we're going to go through that today. Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. This is your host, Mongo Slade. And I'm going to mostly agree with Becky Lynch, but not for the reasons that you think. So, Becky Lynch did an interview in the New York Post saying, quote, We are a little light on women with credibility on Raw. I would extend that to SmackDown, too. So this is just going to be about WWE in general. He said, So anyway, I can give these women who are great credibility. Give them a match. Give them an outing and showcase them in a championship match. I think that only benefits everybody. It benefits the audience because we have more women that we care about and more women that I can beat. Then, uh, she continues, I need people to come up. I need people on this level. But if nobody's getting any TV time, if nobody's getting any story time, then they can't rise up because nobody knows who the hell they are. She continues, if you don't get no TV time, it's hard to get TV time if there's nothing to fight for. We don't. We know that Rhea Ripley likes hanging out with the lads and doesn't like getting hit. So that's why I come along with my championship to give people some opportunities. So we're going John Cena United States Championship Open Challenge with this whole Becky Lynch NXT Champion thing. Now, I actually agree with her. In a previous video I did, I talked about uh, it was called uh, the women were booked better in the Attitude Era or something like that. So like the late 90s, early 2000s. And the reasons why I thought that is because the women had a diversity of talent. They could be um, just managers. They could also be wrestlers. They also were fully formed characters, and pretty much every woman that was on the roster was used in some capacity. Now they just put women in matches, and sometimes and the ma- and then they complain about the match length. The match needs to be longer. The match needs to uh, they needs to have more titles. Look, I agree. If you're going to have women, they need something to fight over. They need rewards. So from that in that regard, I actually agree. But the issue here is that WWE refuses to use women in any way other than being a wrestler. That's the problem. Not everybody is meant to be a 30-minute match wrestler. And you also need to understand that what gets people involved in storylines is the immaterial. Some of the most over female storylines don't involve the championship. It involves personas. And persona is what WWE is all about. They're about characters. They're about personalities. They're about attitudes and a diversity of, well, have a wide array. Let's not use the word diversity. A wide array of talent who have different strengths and weaknesses. Now, what Becky Lynch is talking about is, oh, I want to get everybody some TV time. But what you're also mentioning is that it's just going to be an NXT championship match. So five or 10 minutes or maybe 15 at the most, in which you wrestle them, you beat them, and then they go back to catering. That doesn't actually do anything. You need to have a revolution of the writing staff, of the creative element. Now, I look at everything from the creative, because I analyze the shows, but I also look at the business side. From the business side, why do you have all of these women if you're not going to use them? I remember seeing a tweet from uh, Nikki Cross, and I forgot she even still worked there. Same thing with Zia Lee. I'm like, what are these people doing all day? They don't wrestle. If they wrestle on main event, is that really anything? You're just having matches. If Becky Lynch just wants to have matches, then she could do that on main event. When you bring people to Raw or SmackDown, there should be a purpose to it. And that purpose is what gets people invested. Now, WWE did do something that was fairly recent that I thought was good. And then they botched it. This was the Bailey and Shotzi feud. They did a storyline in which Bailey cut Shotzi's hair. This drove Shotzi crazy, and she started haunting Bailey, sort of like a horror in a horror movie. This is a good idea. The problem is it wasn't consistent. It was shoddy booking. She would be there one week, then she wouldn't be. They would have a match, then Charlotte would interfere, or somebody else would interfere to help Shotzi, and you wouldn't actually get behind Shotzi personally. And then all of a sudden it just died on the vine because nobody gave a damn. And they didn't care because you didn't give people any reason to care because you were inconsistent with your presentation of the pro- of the talent. This is a problem. So yeah, Becky Lynch is right. They do have a credibility problem, not just on Raw, but on WWE TV in general. They only care about certain people. And the thing is, you can't actually broaden and highlight the people that you care about without actually lifting up some of the people that folks are might not be that interested in.
if you don't want somebody like Candice LeRae to be the world champion, that's fine. But at least make her somebody that people are not yawning when she comes out there. And part of the reason why people yawn is because there's no reason to care about this girl. She's not doing anything and she doesn't matter on the show. Yes, it's nice that you have tag team titles for the women. It's not okay when the women don't have tag teams and they don't have feuds and the titles aren't highlighted. So, yes, it, it, you, when you ask the question, is there a credibility problem? Yeah. Is Becky Lynch wrong in her assessment? No. But she has got the right diagnosis, but I think she's got the wrong treatment. The right treatment is not to just have random championship matches full of people who weren't even on TV three weeks ago. The treatment is to get people more involved in the show. And that means you probably need to have your talent do more. You know, you might need to put some women in managerial roles. You probably need to put some of the women in tag teams. You probably need to build factions with the women. You probably need to do more with these girls or just get rid of them. Let's say you have a problem with the crop of talent that you have. Oh no, we, we don't want to push Indy Hartwell in, fire her and replace her. You have a warehouse full of female talent most of whom are very good. If you don't want to use the ones that you already have, you, you, use, you have a cut list, you cut them and replace them. So <laughs> it really doesn't make much sense. But I think the biggest issue is that Becky Lynch is missing the, 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 the big picture here, which is that persona and attitude and character, that needs to be highlighted. And her matches are not going to do that. Her attempt at Pulling a John Cena, having a 15 minute match with Stardust, that's not going to improve your women's division no more than John Cena having these matches improve the mid card of WWE at the time. Yeah, occasionally you're going to strike gold and you're going to impress people with a Sami Zayn or something like that. But for the most part, it's just going to be, oh, wow, Becky Lynch is doing something very nice. She's Santa Claus gifting people with all this time. But then as soon as their 15 minutes of fame are over, they're back in catering, back to doing nothing. And that's not a sustained push. That is not a sustained, going to create any sustained interest in your women's division. It's not going to fix the problem. It is at most a band-aid on the issue. So, and I also don't think she needed to be NXT champion to do that. Now, it's great for the young talent, for like the Danny Palmers and the Kalani Jordans and, you know, the Gigi Dolans and the Blair Davenports. It's great for them on NXT to be able to wrestle Becky Lynch. But for it's, it's still the same issue. It doesn't really showcase who they are in a way that is going to get people behind them in the long term, which is what people want, which is how stars are made. Stars are made in the long term, not in the short term. Look at what's going on with Maxine Dupree. They did a storyline where she was sort of a, a useless manager along with Maximum Male Models. And then they gave her a character arc where now she starts taking her training seriously and she wants to be a wrestler. And that ended up getting over in a major way. Her feud with Valhalla, it got very good reactions. The problem is, where did that momentum go? She beat Valhalla. They wrestled a couple of times and now Maxine Dupree's back to being a manager. Okay, well, you had something there. You could have built on that, but then you chose not to. You dropped the ball. You had something, and then you let it slip through your fingers. Now, anytime you try to do anything with Maxine Dupree, you're going to have to start over. Because people are going to be like, okay, well, it was cool when she was the rookie getting bullied. But now, now what? She's been pretty much a hanger-on for several weeks now. And I liked the storyline. I thought it was a good idea, even though I don't like the Viking Raiders. I thought it was a good idea to take somebody who's not necessarily a tough performer and put them in a situation where they overperform, where they surprise people, where they could do more than you think. I like that. You know, I like that idea. And the fact that it did not it always involve matches. They didn't have a hundred damn matches. They had two or three matches. That was good. It was the right idea. Do more of that. You know, you got Chelsea Green, who is incredibly talented in terms of, you know, creating humor She's a good promo. She's a good persona. She's not given a lot of time. She's given it. She's putting these matches where she's basically beat up in 10 seconds. She's the female version of The Miz. But The Miz gets a lot of TV time. The Miz can stand and talk. Have Chelsea Green have her own show if that's what you want to do. 
I mean, when was the last time a female had her own little talk show? I guess it was Bailey, and it was a couple of years ago. You know, give Chelsea Green an opportunity to do stuff. You know, more stuff between her and Piper Niven. You know, actually form tag teams, which is why you have tag team division. Form tag teams, real tag teams, and let them do their thing and, you know, have relationships and build factions and, you know, uh, women who have are just managers, only people who are only female managers. There's a lot of different things you could do and they're not doing it. They're not investing because part of it is the feminist society that we live in are afraid that showcasing some women as being sexy and not violent is problematic. But that's actually pretty good, too, because you're showing a diversity of womanhood, which is what I mentioned in my previous video. But in this regard, you need women who if you really want women to get over and add credibility and add something to the show, you need those who can do more. And you can't just focus on the ring work. That's dumb. (laughs) You know, that's just a waste of everybody's time. But. Becky Lynch has the right diagnosis, wrong treatment. WWE's women's division is absolute embarrassment. Um, It's not as bad as AEW's, which is even worse. But they have personalities. They have personas. They have characters. You just don't showcase them. You have opportunities there. You need to showcase them. You need to give them more TV time. You need to actually give them storylines that people can get emotionally invested in. And you need to let the horses run. You need to stop trying to, oh, we're going to force feed everybody Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler. It's like, okay, people are not responding to that. Let's go back to what was working before, even if it's people that you personally don't like. Trying to get people to only care about championship matches because, well, if we have a title for them to fight over, then people will care. It's like only if people care about that champion. People care about Becky Lynch. That's why her idea will probably have some benefit, just like people care about John Cena, which is why the United States Open uh, tournaments or whatever worked. But what happened when John Cena dropped the belt? It went back to being a mid-card title, and the guy who won it wasn't even over. You have to invest in the characters and in the personas, not just in matches. That is the number one problem with wrestling in general, is a lack of focus on personality and persona. That's the good thing about the Jade Cargill signing is because they actually are investing in her as a person. You should care about her journey, you know, where she comes from and where she's going. That's a positive. They need to do that more with more talent and then give them an opportunity to get over, not just have matches. That's, oh my God, it's terrible. Let me know what you guys think though. Uh, Like, share, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.